Hey everybody, so today I'm gonna to be talking about eating with dentures. Um, it's on everybody's mind. Are you ever going to be able to enjoy food again? Are you gonna be able to taste food again? That's what we're gonna be talking about today. So make sure that you stick through to the end of the video because I'm gonna be going over all kinds of tips and tricks and just information that you need to know. And I wanna thank Ivoclar Vivident for sponsoring this video. Like, you know, being a YouTuber and getting a sponsorship is a big deal, especially when it's a company like Ivoclar because they're a pretty big deal. They're a big dental manufacturing company worldwide. You know, like literally, they're all over the world and they produce a lot of the products that dental professionals use to treat people like us. They're very big on patient education, so I'm super excited that they chose to sponsor my content. If you wanna learn more about their company, check out the link below. It's www.morethanadenture.com. And by the way, these are Ivoclar teeth. They're the Fenaris teeth. You can get them in implants or removable. Okay, so if you've frequented any of the denture forums, you have probably seen some nightmare stories. And you know, I feel for people who have a tough time with dentures. I really do. My own mother was one of them and she just kind of gave up. She doesn't wear dentures anymore. So I totally empathize with that. But sometimes reading stuff like that can kind of scare you into thinking that you're never gonna be able to enjoy food again. I've even heard that a lot of dentists tell their patients that like, be prepared, you're probably not to be able to have a quality diet again, which I, I don't like that. You know, I don't agree with that. I think that it's kind of setting people up for failure. If they think that they're doomed from the start, what is there even to try for? I will say this, and this is something that you really need to pay attention to and fully understand, like grasp this concept. It is all a matter of perspective. Before I got my teeth pulled, when I had a mouthful of rotten teeth, I couldn't really eat much of anything. I was like super skinny, like way underweight. I just didn't have an appetite because eating was not enjoyable for me at all in any capacity. Like maybe soup was okay, but even then if the temperature was extreme, it would cause pain. So like there were not very many things that I could eat and enjoy with my teeth the way that they were. So if you're coming into becoming a full denture wearer and your diet was already compromised because of the condition of your teeth, then you might find relief in becoming a denture wearer and eating with dentures. That was the situation with me. Now, the first few days are definitely challenging. Like you're, you're not gonna be eating anything substantial. It's gonna be like soup and ice cream and things like that. And then the first two weeks, it's gonna be very awkward. The dentures might feel extremely large in your mouth. You might find it difficult to even fit a spoon or a fork in your mouth. Going into the first month, first two months, you're still kind of getting used to things. You're still getting used to the fact that you have two big hunks of plastic in your mouth and you are learning from scratch how to eat with these teeth in your mouth. It's not the same as having your natural teeth. It's just not, at least not in the beginning. So before you throw in the towel and think that you're never gonna be able to enjoy quality food again, try to start small. Start with very easy things to eat and work your way up to the more difficult things. Also understand that there are going to be things that will be difficult to eat because you have dentures, literally for no other reason than that. So I got my dentures in December of 2010, and then by April of 2011, it was me and my husband's one year anniversary. We took a trip to Gatlinburg, right? So we're walking through the shops at Gatlinburg, and up to that point, like I was eating pretty good. Like there weren't a whole lot of things that I couldn't eat by that point. And that's, that's four months in, that's pretty good. You know what I'm saying? Like my diet significantly improved. So we saw a vendor out there selling sausage dogs and like a huge fan here so we got these big sausage dogs like loaded with sauerkraut and all kinds of stuff on this big like hoagie roll or whatever and we sat down on a bench and I went to bite into it and they like flipped up because it was so big that biting in the front caused them to kind of pop up in the back or down or however you explain it. That's when I first discovered that eating something like a sub or a huge sausage dog or something like that, even like in some situations, a burger where you're taking a huge bite of something, that can happen even if you have adhesive one. So my workaround for that is to just bite small corners of it. Don't just go for the kill. Anytime I encountered an issue with something, I tried to modify how I ate it and it wasn't like it was a huge inconvenience. It's not like I was like cutting pizza up with a fork or any ridiculous thing like that. Like I could eat pretty much anything. It's just, I had to relearn a different way to eat those things. Another thing that I discovered is when you are eating 
peanuts. When you chew up peanuts and you've got these little teeny tiny peanuts floating around, sometimes they can work themselves underneath your denture and then you bite down and they're wedged up in there and they will stab into your gums and it's kind of painful. So if I was eating peanuts or something that had nuts in it, then I would be drinking something so that I could flush it out and nothing would get worked up under there and cause pain. Caramel was a hot mess. No, this is a disaster. <laughs> Okay, and I definitely didn't miss that from my diet. It was something that I decided, you know what, it's just not worth the hassle because for me, it just got stuck in odd places, plastered to the palate up top, and it's just like, it's too much work. Like, I don't wanna have to work for my food unless it's like crab legs or something like that. I decided to buy some Big League Chew once. I determined that I could not eat Big League Chew. It was way too juicy and messy and that also got plastered everywhere. Bubblicious or like other really, really juicy gums, they just made a mess. Regular gum like Big Red or Juicy Fruit or something like that, never had an issue with those things. So it's not like you can't eat gum anymore, but you might find that the more flavorful, juicier kinds can possibly get stuck to your dentures. But you know what? You might be able to eat that stuff. So don't listen to me. These are just the things that I found difficult. And you will either find a workaround to be able to enjoy these things or you will avoid them and move on. But my diet was never limited. It was insane how good my diet was with dentures. Like you would think from all the things that you hear from people about eating with dentures and how challenging and difficult it is that, you know, I wouldn't have been eating ribs. I wouldn't have been eating corn on the cob and a freaking apple. Like, you know, watch videos of other YouTubers. They will bite into an apple. It was not difficult for me. You learn how to eat these things. It's just different eating with dentures. But the more you practice, the more you will learn what works. One thing I think really helped me become very good at eating with dentures is that I would frequently eat without adhesive. The only times that I really glued my teeth in was if I was going to like a restaurant or, you know, out somewhere to some kind of function, some event, just for my own peace of mind, just for extra security. But when I was at home, I was not eating with adhesive. Like more often than not, it was, there was no adhesive. And it was because of that, because of my persistence and my determination to figure it out that I got really good at balancing them. Like I got good at keeping them in my mouth. It wasn't a problem, even with the bottom denture. And the bottom denture is the one that usually causes the most problems because with the top, you've got suction. Bottom, it's floating. That's why a lot of dentists will recommend that if you're gonna get implants at all, you at least get them on the bottom because that one is just gonna flop all over the place. But I just, I figured it out. And that doesn't mean that they'd never moved. Like they would move around, but they weren't flying out of my mouth and I could still eat with them. One thing that you don't wanna do is eat something that's going to break your dentures because they're acrylic, you know? Like you don't want to bite into a peppermint or some other kind of hard candy. It can chip a tooth, it can crack a tooth, it can crack the entire denture. Like you just wanna avoid things like that. Like for me, I have implants and my bite force is amazing and I'm sure that I could probably bite into something like that. My implants could withstand it, but these teeth, they will pop off, they will break. Now, if you've tried everything, you've really hung in there, you've given it several months, and you're still finding it to be very difficult eating basic things, you're gonna wanna check in with your dentist. You wanna check in and make sure that your bite is not off, that the dentures are fitting properly, that you know you don't need another reline, or some other thing isn't going on with your dentures that's preventing you from eating. Because honestly, most people can eat with dentures. I don't want any of you thinking that because you, know, you literally can't eat with them that that's just normal and that's just life now. It really isn't. So make sure you're checking in with your dentist if you're running into problems and you, you've given it your best shot and you're still finding it to be difficult. In some situations, they might recommend implants. That's what they did with my mom. She tried, she did her best, but there was just something about her bottom ridge that just would not allow her to eat with her bottom teeth in. And when she took her bottom teeth out, eventually she got sick of just having the upper because it's, you know, teeth up here and just gums down there, not worth it to her. She just gave up altogether. So she doesn't have teeth. She doesn't wear teeth. She doesn't eat with teeth and that's just her choice. But just don't assume that because you're a denture wearer that your diet has to tremendously suffer. It really shouldn't and you should be communicating these things with your dentist. So let me know in the comments below, how long did it take for you to get used to your dentures to where you were eating like, you know, 
all of the stuff that you love, all of the stuff that maybe you missed out on when your teeth were not in the best shape. Let's encourage some people who are terrified that they're going to have to stick to mashed potatoes for the rest of their life. It ain't even like that. Also, let us know if you're having challenges. Like, what are some of the obstacles that you're encountering when you're eating? And what are some of the, the foods that are on your blacklist that you just absolutely will not eat again? So that wraps it up for today's video. If you liked it, make sure that you give it a like. Just click the like button because it helps boost the video in the algorithm so more people can see it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I put out content like this every week. So hit the bell notification also so you see those alerts as I drop a new video. And all of my socials are in the description box below and I will see you guys again next time and y'all take care. I am sweating all my makeup off because this light is as bright as the sun.